Hello, we have more equipment for repair here. This time it is a wireless microphone or instrument system by Shure. And this model is quite old, still in the VHF frequency band. And uh, the frequencies uh, for this model can be between 176 and 210 megahertz. This particular set has the base frequency of 192.6 MHz and it has several channels around this base frequency and something is wrong with this set. I don't have any schematic for this um, model but I do have a working set which has a different frequency but anyway, it can be very helpful in case we want to compare something. Let's check what's wrong with this. I attached the antennas and plugged in the power. Let's power it up. So it does power up. And here we have a freshly charged rechargeable lithium-ion battery in the transmitter. And there is the uh, frequency selector. There are eight channels around the base frequency and the default setting is 4 and that's what it is set to right now. And the same thing here on the receiver in that little hole in the front panel. So let's turn on the transmitter. And here we have a battery check button and there is almost no reception we should see the maximum right now because they are so close and we should see both diversity channels a and b light up but they don't and here is the working set for comparison let's turn this transmitter on and there you go, we have the maximum reception and both diversity channels light up. Let's check the transmitters first. Here I have my good old Hewlett Packard 8590A spectrum analyzer, which I repaired recently. I have three videos about it, check them out if you're interested. And here I have my Agilent E4406A transmitter tester. This instrument is much more precise in terms of frequency and um, signal level measurements, but uh, the span is limited to 10 MHz at one time. So uh, we are going to use this guy to look at the range from 150 to 250 megahertz. Slightly wider than really necessary, just in case. And here I set the center frequency to 195 megahertz. Let's have a look. Here is the transmitter from the working set. The frequency code is CP. The frequency is 196.6 MHz. Let's turn it on. Here it is. No problem. Let's search for this peak. 196.58. Wonderful. Let's turn it off. And here is the transmitter from the set which is faulty. The frequency code is CM and the frequency is 192.6 MHz. Let's turn this on. And no problem as well. Let's search for this peak. 192.6, no problem. Here I took the cover off. And look at this build quality. It is wonderful. So, we see a modular construction here. There are two identical RF boards here. This is channel A marked on the board and channel B. And both are marked CM here, which is the frequency code. 
we also have this uh, little board here and uh, this middle board with the output connectors and there is also the front panel board so I think this must be the local oscillator board you see these uh, solder jumpers uh, they must be uh, here to configure the frequency and this board is also marked CM here and there are two coax cables running to each of the channels so I would start from checking the power rails and the output from this local oscillator board and here I opened the other working unit so uh, this combination of the jumpers is different on these two uh, boards and these RF boards are marked CP here and here so I think it takes more than just changing the jumpers uh, to change the frequency so uh, I guess these RF boards are also tuned uh, for a particular band I think I found the power connectors here so this wire is running to this RF channel and this wire is powering this RF channel and I measure 10 volts there and it is the same in the working unit so I think the power is okay here and here I'm testing the local oscillator board this is the working unit and here I have a piece of coax with an exposed end and as you can see I can pick up the local oscillator just fine and if we search for this peak the frequency is 185.9 megahertz which is uh, 10.7 megahertz below the base frequency of this unit and this is the faulty unit and as you can see I pick up nothing at all and I expect this frequency to be 4 megahertz lower because this is the difference in frequency between the units but look at this and if I push on this board sometimes this frequency appears and if I push again it sometimes disappears oh, I cannot reproduce it <laughs> now so now after pushing a few times I cannot make it disappear anymore except I push and hold but when I release the pressure the oscillation appears again and it seems like a cracked soldering joint on that board so I need to reflow the soldering joints there around this area here is this board and it happens to be a double-sided one and I found that pushing on this component which looks like a trim cap to me was the easiest way to produce the effect we've seen so I'm thinking about reflowing everything in this area and on the other side as well and here is how I'm going to do it suppose I'm going to reflow this uh, trim cap I'm going to apply a little bit of this flux on both sides and just reflow the soldering joints like so and I'm going to repeat this for all the components and we'll see what happens
So, I reflowed all the soldering joints on this little board. It was not difficult. And I cleaned the board with alcohol. And I also found that this way of testing, I mean by touching the stream cap with my finger, is wrong. Yes, I can disrupt the oscillation by doing so, but I believe this is because I introduced capacitance of my body in some critical part of the circuit, and I checked I can do exactly the same with the working unit, so it does not mean a thing. If I try pushing with a plastic tool like this, no matter where I push, how I push, I cannot reproduce the problem anymore. So, it seems to be fixed. Unfortunately, with a problem like this, you can never be sure it is reliably fixed and will not come back. So I will have to use the equipment for a while and see what happens. But for now, let's assume the problem is fixed. And by the way, the frequency of this local oscillator is 181.9 MHz, uh, which is again 10.7 uh, MHz lower than the base frequency of the unit, just like in the other unit we've seen before. And I thought this might be interesting to note. Let's test with the transmitter. There you go, as you can see the maximum RF level and both diversity channels light up even with no antennas attached. So we have a working unit and uh, I hope this video was interesting and useful. Thank you very much for watching. Bye!